I'm Carlo Mancatelli of Time2 Resources. This video will help you to understand short run costs of production. If you want to make notes whilst following the video, why not download the handy PDF note taker? The link can be found in the description box below. Short run is the time period in which a minimum of one factor of production is fixed. This production occurs in real time. Economists normally make the assumption that capital or land is more likely to be the fixed factor. It's difficult to build a new factory in a short period of time or access land to build the factory on. A fundamental feature of the distinction between the short run and long run is that in the short run, we can only increase output by adding more of the variable factors of production to fixed capital. We cannot create more factors of production, for example, a new factory, but we have to use what we already have. Costs, therefore, are variable. In the short run, a firm has sunk costs. These are costs that the firm has already paid and are not recoverable if the firm wishes to leave the industry. For example, a factory has already been built. These costs are unavoidable. Before we look at short run production costs, we're going to look at some important concepts. Short run costs are when at least one factor cost is fixed, for example, capital. They are both fixed and variable costs. Long run costs are when all factor costs are variable. There are no fixed costs. Fixed resources are those resources that do not vary with output and are not dependent on the quantity being produced, for example, machinery. Variable resources do vary with output and are dependent on the quantity being produced. For example, the raw materials used in the production process. In this diagram, we're going to illustrate total cost curves. Firstly, we're going to start off with total fixed costs. These do not vary with output, such as rent or salaries. Therefore, the fixed cost curve is shown as a horizontal straight line. Next, we can add the total variable cost curve. These do vary with output, such as raw materials. The variable cost curve slopes upwards and to the right, bending outwards and then inwards. Finally, we bring in the total cost curve. The total cost curve is a mixture of total fixed costs plus total variable costs. The total cost curve slopes upwards and to the right, bending outwards and then inwards. It begins at the same point as the fixed cost curve and mirrors the total variable cost curve because fixed costs plus variable costs equals total costs. We can illustrate average costs by using a diagram. Firstly, we start with average fixed costs. As output increases, total fixed costs are spread across the greater production. If fixed costs equals £100 and the firm produces one unit, average fixed costs equal £100 divided by the one unit equals £100. If output increases to two units, Fixed cost is still £100, but average fixed cost equals £100 divided by two units, therefore falls to £50. If the firm increases production to 10 units, average fixed cost would fall to £10. As we approach higher levels of output, average fixed cost becomes less and less important to the firm. Next, we can bring in the average variable cost curve. This falls first and then rises in a U-shape. This is due to, at first, the law of increasing returns to the variable factors of production, such as labour, and then due to diminishing returns. Finally, we can bring in the average cost curve, the average cost of producing a unit of output. This is also a U-shaped curve. Again, this is due to the law of increasing returns as total product increases, and then diminishing returns as total product falls. Once again, this falls first and then rises, but this time it gets closer to the average variable cost curve as output increases. This is because, although average fixed costs continue to fall, average variable costs are increasing. As output increases, the impact of average fixed costs becomes negligible. Therefore, the average variable cost starts to resemble the average cost curve, and they become closer and closer. Note on the table how the figures for average variable cost and average cost get closer to each other as output increases. Finally, we can bring in the marginal cost, the cost of producing one extra unit of output. 
The marginal cost is U-shaped. At first, as output increases, marginal cost falls. This means that producing an additional unit, the marginal unit, costs less than the cost of producing the previous unit. After we have reached the lowest point on the marginal cost curve, any additional unit will cost more than the previous unit. The marginal cost curve always cuts the average and average variable costs at their lowest point. If marginal cost is below average cost, it will pull down the average. If it is above, it will increase the average. So, why is the total cost curve this shape? This diagram is an essential element of the economist toolkit and can be used to illustrate cost curves for a range of market structures, such as perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopoly and monopoly. It is an amalgamation of some of the curves we have already looked at in this presentation. In the top part of the diagram, we are looking at costs per unit. In the bottom half, we look at total costs. Total cost is always rising. This is because the marginal cost, the cost of producing an additional unit, is always above zero. Therefore, it adds to total cost. At first, total cost is rising at a diminishing rate. This occurs because marginal cost is falling, as seen in the downward section of the green marginal cost curve. This equates to the orange section of the total cost curve. Here, costs are rising, but at a diminishing or slower rate. After this, marginal cost starts to rise, as seen in the upward section of the green marginal cost curve. This equates to the purple section of the total cost curve. Here, costs are rising, but at an increasing rate. Thank you for watching and listening to this video. The understanding of short run cost of production is fundamental to the understanding of microeconomics. It's imperative that you learn these graphs so that you can draw them and understand them in the exam room.